I now have the honour of welcoming Seamus Heaney to speak for a chance to read. It's difficult to find the right words to describe the influence of someone who always does. Seamus, as we all feel we know him well enough to call him from his public persona, is one of the most familiar and affirming voices in the poet sphere. I ask you to give a very warm welcome to Seamus Heaney. President Higgins, President uh, Murphy, August Akharja, Akushla, whatever. Um, I'm just thinking about uh, the idea of the book as central. On a couple of the uh, seats of learning that I've been associated with on and off, the book has been part of the, uh, the coat of arms. In, in um, Harvard, they have three, there's a Puritan outfit, you know, and he's three Bibles, I suppose, three open books, and their, their motto is Veritas, the truth. Oxford University has a one <coughs> book scrib scribbled on, and uh, its uh, motto is Dominus Illuminatio Mea, the Lord is my illumination. So I was wondering to myself, what, what could we put on the Great Book of Ireland? And uh, I thought there's a, an early poem by a scribe, well, it purports to be a scribe. Uh, purport, it purports to be Colm Kill. But clearly it's a man who was used to scribing. And it's the one, I wish I could say it in Irish, but I know the first line anyway. Is skich mochrob on scraving. My, and I, I even translated it, so it's quite short. My hand is cramped from pen work. <laughs> my, my quill has a tapered point. Its bird mouth issues a blue dark beetle sparkle of ink. Wisdom keeps welling in streams from my fine drawn sallow hand. River run on the vellum of ink from green-skinned holly. My small runny pen keeps going through books, through thick and thin, to enrich the scholar's holding, pen work that cramps my hand. I think a skeek on craving would be a very good uh, uh, motto for, for the book. It, it's also been a great evening here for the book and for us, uh, even ones who don't live in Cork, uh, we, we do take pleasure in it. For uh, it's, The culture is enriched by these ritual occasions, and we are immensely lucky to have a president who has a sense of literature and a sense of values and a sense of language that is critical in two senses. It's critically important that, that is there for the sake of the culture. But he has also the gift for criticizing, which is also a, a boon in our, in our time. And it, for all of us, this will be an unforgettable occasion for the book's sake, and for Theo's sake, and for Eugene's sake, and for the sake of the poets who are here, an enormous gathering of the Estana. Uh, the idea was that, uh, I, thought, I thought everybody would be ready to tell you the truth, but there's, there's just two of us here. The, the idea was that um, we would read the poems that are in the book. And I wrote out uh, a poem in 1989. Uh, John Montague and myself went in at the same time, and he wrote, I wrote first, <laughs> and uh, he wrote second. But we had the same thing written, written, uh, it was, a, he was in town from uh, France, I think, or from Cork, I can't remember which, uh, for, um, for his 60th birthday. And I was there for my 50th, there was an event, as I say, in um, the Gate Theatre. 
Well, anyway, we celebrated our birthdays by uh, this uh, pretty, uh, pretty self-satisfied act of writing out a poem in, in verse and uh, in longhand. Mine was from a book called North, and it's pretty grim stuff. It's called a book called uh, North, and the poem is called <coughs> Punishment, and it's in the great book. So, uh, with a sense of the honour to be here with musicians, poets, and uh, people who believe in musicians, poets, and artists. Punishment. It's, this was, uh, anyway, it's a, a, bo a bog body from Denmark of a, a young woman who was apparently stoned to death. I can feel the tug of the halter at the nape of her neck, the wind on her naked front. It bros her nipples to amber beads. It shakes the frail rigging of her ribs. I can see her drowned body in the bog, the weighing stone, the floating rods and boughs, under which at first she was a barked sapling that is dug up, oak bone, brain firkin, her shaved head like a stubble of black corn, her blindfold a soiled bandage, her noose a ring to store the memories of love. Little adulteress, before they punished you, you were flaxen-haired, undernourished, and your tar-black face was beautiful. My poor scapegoat, I almost love you, but would have cast, I know, the stones of silence. I am the artful voyeur of your brains exposed and darkened combs, your muscles webbing and all your numbered bones. I, who have stood dumb when your betraying sisters, called in tar, wept by the railings, who would connive in civilised outrage, yet understand the exact and tribal intimate revenge. Thanks a lot. Thank you.